What's going on, y'all? Today on this episode of Overtime, we are going to be talking about the first and second episodes of HBO's Winning Time series. So buckle up. If y'all been watching along, y'all know what this is about to be. So stay tuned. Sir, <laughs> go ahead, Tim. Kick us off now. <clears throat> it's your boy T I M K I N Z, the number three, aka Ass Catch Him, aka Mr. Give It To Me. How are y'all? Welcome, bike. If you ain't never been here before, welcome. I am the RJ, only known as the RJ. And I'm Camille, point guard of the crew, the real life Tifa Lockhart, the girl next door, you know, holding it down for all the women who love sports. And it's your boy, Kate Harris, the gentleman. The gentleman. The everyday gentleman. 24 7. But better known as K Diddy. Take that. Take that. So, yeah, episode one of Winning Time. So, in case you aren't familiar with what this is based off of, Winning Time is based off of the book by Jeff Perlman that came out in 2014 called Showtime, which just takes a look through the Showtime era of the Lakers dynasty. Lots of interviews. The book itself, you know, it, it's considered to be uh, historically accurate for the most part. Mm-hmm. The TV show, though, is a dramatization of the facts that were presented in the book. Uh-huh. <laughs> so there are points within the show where they take some liberties that aren't necessarily true. I will be doing my best throughout our conversations of pointing out things that were not true that I've been able to find. Gentlemen, if y'all see anything else that y'all knew, it's like, this did not happen or (laughs) this is not true. Definitely can get into that as well. I also want to say before we get into it that the NBA uh, (laughs) objected the show, hitting the air. Of course, they don't uh, want titties. (laughs) Oh no, they don't want they don't want titties and Playboy mansions and no, orgies. they don't orgies. Yeah, and yeah. HBO apparently did not use or receive permission to use the trademarks of the NBA. They're just doing it anyways, similar to what they did on Ballers, where they just said we're gonna use it in the fail stuff. Okay, we got money. We want to brothers. <laughs> right. what, y'all, what y'all gonna do? We got dinner dates. Just go ahead. And thing is, like the NBA. I mean, Turner is. Part of the same family as HBO, so it's like, well, you know, we pay y'all. So, do you really want to burn that bridge? Like, no. just let's look away a little bit. Just you know, just, <laughs> we just, said y'all can't. We said time. they could. Y'all need to go <laughs> about your business. <laughs> All right. So, episode one opens, and it is in ninety one. Uh, you see Magic Johnson at the doctor's office, and you don't really hear too much about what's going on. But if you know the history. You know it was him receiving his HIV uh, diagnosis. And then it goes all the way back. (laughs) It just jumps back. Like, you see that little clip. And then you jump all the way back to the beginning of where this series starts. And I do just want to ask y'all first off, did y'all like that inclusion of that moment? Oh, oh, this is how we open the show? (laughs) This is what we're going to start off at? And whoever that was next to him was weeping. I mean, he was weeping. (laughs) I was like, you love, you thought that he was dying. At that time, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, yeah. If he At that time. Like that, he probably thought that he, yeah. Not even that he thought, he probably just thought Magic was about to die. Like in 91, yeah. what we knew about serious. HIV and AIDS was yeah. way yeah. different than what we know now. But yeah, I but, was shocked. <laughs> I like this. I was, I was shocked. I was like, okay, we'll bring it back. I'm sure we'll get back there. We got to. Yeah. It's kind of jarring going from that directly to like the Playboy Mansion scene. Like, obviously, they have the credits to split it up, but it's like, what is this? Yeah. Like, if I didn't know anything, I'd be like, what is this show about? Because <laughs> it's a hard right there. 
How you go, bro? Uh, go from HIV to titties, like that's yes. It's kind of like, hey, call how you got this? <laughs> <laughs> because, like you mentioned, it goes from that, and then you see Dr. Jerry Buzz in bed with what we're assuming is a Playboy uh, bunny. Yeah, I think he said mm-hmm. uh, Miss December. Yeah, something mm-hmm. like that. And he breaks the fourth wall. Look at the camera talking about how basketball is like sex, and great sex is great basketball, and he's gonna buy the Lakers. <laughs> Hey, you, know, right, right. you know, I actually do dig sometimes when they break the fourth wall and talk like, like if it's good, if it's like a good dialogue or something quick, kind of like how they break it up with them. Like, hey, I'm, I'm going to show you something real quick. And then <laughs> go back to it. There are some people who really don't like the way that this show is filmed with the fourth wall being broken and then how they switch from like modern film to like uh, mm-hmm. that grainy mm-hmm. film and they switch it back again. And people were like, OK, y'all doing a lot right now. How do y'all like the Tim already said his fourth wall opinion, but like, how do y'all like the fourth wall and how the show is being found? Because that's a big part of it. Yeah, I I actually enjoy it. Um, I feel like it gives you it's I don't I don't know another show right now that's doing anything like kind of similar to what they're doing right now. So I feel like it's dope. I, I it makes me more engaged and makes it more entertaining for me personally, like watching it this way. It's kind of like um, those mockumentary shows where, like, it kind of, you know, it goes to, like, the confessional where it can give you, like, the inner dialogue of the person that's acting it out. So you can kind of get, like, you know, they can wink to the camera or they can give you little things like, hey, you know, pay attention to this or I think this is funny or, you know, Mm -hmm. like, uh, jumping ahead when he's like, oh, yeah, we got the money. And he's like, we don't have the money. (laughs) money. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, so it's like it it injects like comedy into it where it wouldn't Mm -hmm. otherwise be or injects like drama or like, you know, just a, hey, pay attention to this because it's going to come back later, that type of thing. So Mm -hmm. I I don't mind it. Like changing the film is kind of cool because, you know, it does give it more of an authentic feel to the time period that it was in. and I think that it would be annoying if that was the entire series, but like <laughs> splicing it in every once in a while, like it's yeah. like, oh, cool. It also makes me feel like I'm on drugs when I watch it. <laughs> and I think that's part of, no, like for real, because it, it, it's so jarring. Like you're watching it in one way, and then your whole vision change and it's something else. And it's something I'm like, okay, are y'all trying to make me feel like it's the cocaine uh, <laughs> NBA? <laughs> Which it is, but like it makes me feel like it's that time period a little bit more, just knowing like NBA history and whatnot. And also, that's a fact check. Dr. Jerry Buss was well known at the Playboy Mansion, so none of that is fabricated. Like he was known Dr. for Buss. being a Playboy. He had a residency. <laughs> Dr. Buss. Dr. Buss. He he took magic to the mansion when magic was like nineteen. Mm-hmm. Again, cause and effect. but yeah dr bus is you know talking about how he plans to buy the team and it would be 60 67.5 million dollars for him to buy the team in the forum and i think the kings were in that too the hockey team not Mm -hmm. sacramento 65 i did some math because i'm always curious with inflation 65.7 mil is about 264 million dollars now still a deal (laughs) Of what he was able to get for the Lakers. So, like Eric mentioned, he was talking about how he still needs to get 15 and some change, million dollars to get the team. He's like, I ain't got it, but I'll I'll figure it out. Uh, Just to be clear, the Lakers are now valued at 4.6 billion. See? (laughs) See I uh, I always laughed about that time period because it was always interesting with what you could have gotten with just like coke and a smile type shit. <laughs> like, like, you know, I, you got 37 mil. I got it. You, you ain't gonna show me no bank slips, no statements, no nothing. Just well, they knew he he got an asset. That's like you know, that's how a lot of rich dudes are. We got an asset. Got cash. Like I need to know you got no, I got it. Don't worry about it. I got it. Like it ain't liquid, <laughs> hey, but I hey, he said he got it. He he came up with it. He did come up with it. So he I mean, definitely did come day, up with I guess it. You, you hold him at that. I guess that's all you need is a wink and a handshake. Like, all right, cool, we got it. But I will say that whole type was funny. His business manager, Frank, made me laugh hysterically because of how they mm-hmm. break the fourth wall and all that. Because, mm-hmm. like, that scene's ending and he's walking out and he's like, I hate him. And then you see him walk out and he comes back and he's like, No, I really hate him. And the way he's <laughs> shaking his head like this, I was like, Yo, Frank is hilarious. I like this guy. I like this guy. I do like Frank as well. I was like, He, 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 he stressed, bro. <laughs> he stressed. <laughs> 
Hmm, okay. I just saw something completely unrelated that we'll talk about uh, some other time, but... Mm -hmm. That's why I I kind of peeked over and see. Yeah, they they then cut back to You Meet Magic. And first of all, they did an excellent job casting Magic Johnson and Dr. Jerry Buzz. Yeah, Yeah, look at the room. Okay, okay, cast this thing. Yeah, I didn't see... Like, it was like, it was fine because it's everybody playing different people. Like, Cookie is dark skinned, apparently. Um, but like, in episode two specifically, like, he looks just like Magic at certain yes. points. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Like, yeah, they did. <laughs> Aside from him being six inches shorter, like, they did a great job. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, what, like six five? Six three. He's only six. I thought he was taller than mm-hmm. that. Jesus. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, Hollywood ain't that big. But if you notice, <laughs> that way, she don't fit below. So, like, he looks as cool. they should. It's smart. That's smart. But yeah, you meet Magic, you see his mama, his mom hates the nickname Magic, and <laughs> as you meet Cookie, Cookie gives him his jacket back, so you know she's really dumb. We're going to talk a lot more about Cookie in episode two, but you get a little taste of Cookie in this in this episode <laughs> before you get a little taste of Cookie. You see, what, you see what I did there? You see what I did there? <laughs> num, num, num. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> and then as you're meeting Magic for the first time, hey, you know, but no, as you meet Magic for the first time, then it goes back to LA and you're meeting Jerry West for the very first time. Now, Jerry West is a NBA legend. I mean, he is the logo, he is Lakers royalty. And at this time, he is the head coach of said Lakers team. What did y'all think of how do y'all feel about Jerry West, how he's portrayed in this in this show? Go ahead, Ken. I hate it. <laughs> Fuck Jerry West. That's where I'm at. What? Like, yeah. I heard Elaborate. About him today, you know, that he was questionable with his racism a little bit. I heard that, you know, he used to get down. But I don't know. They portray him to make you hate him. And I they did a good job. Because I hate him. Fuck him. He can't be the lovable boy asshole? No, nah, bro. Fuck him. Oh, he just hollering. No, Jerry, he, he, no, Jerry got some problems. In his girls. In his girls on the ground crying. One moment. <laughs> <laughs> there is, like, a lot of pushback from NBA media types about like all oh, the portrayal of jerry west is inaccurate like sure he cusses a lot and he has a notable temper but like he doesn't he doesn't blow up at people he's not just a walking talking rage machine and it's like again going back to your point before it's like it's this is a dramatization not a documentary so like there will be liberties taken um and i don't i mean aside from what ken just said i don't think that this portrayal is going to stain the legacy of jerry west like he's the nba logo he's Mm-hmm. Regardless, one of the greatest GMs of all time, one of the greatest players of all time, like he'll be fine. It's okay. And yeah, like I think that episode two does a lot more to kind of shade like where mm-hmm. that comes from and like that it's actually his depression that manifests into you know like his profanity laced tirades. <laughs> but otherwise, like yeah. I, I think it's fine. Like it is good to show that not everybody was on board and he's like a, a avatar for people that were resistant to change like he's like he's six nine get his ass in the post whereas like obviously we know like you can be a six nine point guard it can work yeah. it's just you gotta keep you know your mind gotta be open to it and it's like he's he's a representation of that yeah and to your point eric what they say about the portrayal of jerry west in this show is like jerry west had a lot of demons has a lot of demons he himself has come out and discussed them but they were saying the way it manifested itself wasn't the way that the show does it where he's hollering and cussing you out and snapping golf clubs over his leg and and throwing trophies <laughs> through windows. Me. They're like it was more so like a sad depression. Like it wasn't mm-hmm. it was it was not anger. It was more just very depressed. And when you think about making a TV show, a guy who's angry can be funny. A guy who's sad and depressed is sad and depressed. Like there's there's I mean you could spin it a certain way to try to make that funny. But it's easier, I think, to get that content out of someone who's angry rather than Mm -hmm. someone who is depressed and sad. So I got why they made that liberty. But I think it's important for people to understand that that was an artistic liberty that the show took in the portrayal of Jerry West. And I do just find it interesting. Like he wanted Sidney Moncrief. And it's like as a kind of I'm like, that would be interesting because like I think that Sidney Moncrief is underrated like universally around the NBA. Like obviously he's not Magic Johnson, but I do wonder if he played in LA with Kareem, like would he be looked at differently? Just like, even if his co- career played out completely the same, like would he be looked at differently, like historically? Cause like he was a great player 
he was just hitting in Milwaukee for 10 years, like <laughs> and injured some of those some yeah. of those years. But. So I do, I do wonder, you know, like if they had gone that path, like what you know, how things would have been different for Sydney and obviously for the Lakers and Bucks. Do you think that uh his depression or the reasons for his depression was unwarranted? Like thinking about all them years that he was the face of the franchise and all them years he was getting smacked year. After years, losing to the Celtics six year. years in a row can do that to you. <laughs> like, ugh, and then Red over there talking big shit to you. Like, it's like, yeah, that can that can really send you down the spiral. Now you're the coach, and as the coach, you can't get him over the hump either. Like, I think, and again, like we're jumping ahead to episode two, but I think that it's it goes back further than that, and like that's just who mm-hmm. he is, and like the losing didn't help. It amplified, it, I think. right? I think it amplified uh, a lot of what he had in him. Because I was doing a lot of Jerry West Googles and yeah, people like, like he is a gentleman for sure. Like mm-hmm. he is somebody who you could approach and whatnot, but, like, but he just battled so many personal demons where he didn't think he was good enough. And again, like you mentioned Tim, getting beat by the Celtics six years, like six times in a row. And they, the, the way they showed it <laughs> and, the and the, in the, the show, I was just like, sheesh, just like loses again, Celtics again, again. <laughs> Hey, Mr. MVP, you lost again. Like, as long, oh. it was, it'd have been worse if it was Twitter around, uh, but they pretty Man. much was at that time. I do want to say uh, <laughs> about around the world, Norm Nixon. This thing when we got introduced by to his Norm, son, by the way. yes, played by his. Oh, that's him for real. Son. That's his son. That's his son. That's his son. Okay. 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 Um. I was like, oh, this dude funny. He the nail shop getting getting, you know, and the <laughs> way he sure. got pe- the way he got pieced in the nail shop, I was dying. <laughs> they pieced him. I mean, we thought she, she was the mailman. She wouldn't let up. I was like, how you gonna let her light you up while you getting your toes done? <laughs> you couldn't even get out fast enough because you gotta let your feet dry. <laughs> Meanwhile, she lighting him up all the way out the door. If she wouldn't get her hair half done, she would have kept rolling, bro. And then they <laughs> laughed at dying. him as he walked out the door. Like it was the literally the moment until he left. He got peace. He got peace. I've been and there. I got ripped out the door before. I, I've been there. Yeah. <laughs> Followed out the door, out the apartment, down the hall, out the elevator. <laughs> if it I wasn't was, two floors, it'd have been out the building. I, <laughs> He's not exaggerating. <laughs> he he's felt what Norm felt that scene before. <laughs> oh, that shit. All, all he could do was laugh. Mind. All I could do was laugh. I was like, "Are oh, they still?" I look back. Are oh, they still going? Walk outside. Oh, they look upstairs. He didn't over the banister, yelling, <laughs> yelling ribs over the banister. <laughs> Why somebody holding the door open? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Was Norm, Norm Nixon. He was somebody who I was not that familiar with mm-hmm. just because I'm not a big Lakers fan like that or anything like that. So I was texting my uncles like, yo, what's the word on Norm Nixon? Like, y'all was there. Y'all watched him. What's the deal? Was like, he was legit. He was an all-star. My uncle Michael said that he would compare him to somebody like a CJ McCollum uh, in today's game where it was like, he he got you. But like, he was he was good. He was an all-star type of guy. And, you know, he just wasn't Magic Johnson. So. <laughs> that is what it is. So they had this one-on-one game in this first episode, which did not happen. This is for TV um, at Donald Sterling's place, which I was like, that's an interesting nugget to throw in there. <laughs> yeah, that was dope. Donald was Sterling was worst Donald of his era. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they, they had. Him. Hey, that's what they, they put. They the, did. They, they, and they had him. They had the racism just dialed up from the beginning. Like, oh, you got a big one. You got a big one, don't you? <laughs> Oh, nice and strong. Go. Goddamn, let's go. Big Yeah, Blake Griffin has confirmed that that was the case. Like at those white parties, like he would come and like just, you know, like put his Sorry. Negroes on display, basically. Like, or like he would bring women or people into the locker room and be like, oh, yes, look at my big, strong athletes. So, yeah. Wow. That's crazy. That, the, the you know, that. That game might not have necessarily happened, but that is an accurate representation of Donald, of Donald. Sterling that they mm, portrayed. Now, I will say also <laughs> that Jerry Buss and Donald Sterling were friends, and he did not want people to know that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact. 
the way he like slow walked him into that one on one though was I was like, oh, you smooth. It was smooth. He, yeah. I mean, he didn't even realize he was slowly talking them, walking them, removing the fur. <laughs> I like that they did that. I liked it. I thought it was a good scene for TV where I'm like, I know Magic probably at home in real life like that. Nigga Norm could never have done such a thing. <laughs> he would never. He would never. I would have I would have cut Norm up. But hey, that is what it is. But speaking of racism, I do want to go back to the dinner that Magic had with his dad and Dr. Oh. Buzz. And then who was the old owner? Uh, Jack. Jack Kent Cook. Yeah. Kent Cook. I looked him up too because I wanted to see how much he had to pay in that divorce settlement. But we'll get there. Um. Yeah, I wrote a note to myself and I just typed down Jack was operating on a different level of racism. Thoroughbred based on how they eat, wouldn't call Kareem Kareem. And then the boy mm. comment. And I was like, mm, that's three strikes you out, buddy. That's a lot of racism in a very short scene. Yeah, I was listening to the companion podcast that they have on uh, like HBO producer podcast. And Adam McKay, who's the director of this, he directed like the big short and stepbrothers and Anchorman, like he's directed a bunch of stuff mm-hmm. like throughout his years. Um, he was saying like it never occurred to him like to portray racism that way. Like he usually thinks like, you know, be obvious. Um, but like he had black writers in the room and he was saying that they kind of explained to him like racism isn't just like a series of events, it's like a constant thing that you experience like throughout the entire day. And it's like these small microaggressions that you don't like that other people wouldn't necessarily pick up on. But he was like that. That was why he chose to portray it that way. He's like that was the, like one of the smartest things that we ever did, or something like that. So oh yeah, because I heard it like the the, mm-hmm. the, the dog whistle, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, definitely pick that up. Definitely pick that up. And or like his way of trying to relate to Magic's dad was like, oh, you work for Chrysler. Like I'm buying the Chrysler building. Like uh, 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 he owns it. Ha uh-huh. <laughs> ha. I he definitely was like, so, hey, like he's working from him to him to me. Like, ha, ha. like that's that's cool, right? And sand dabs. And <laughs> Enjoy the dabs. Like, we all had the same face as pops. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, that shit ain't funny. Well, where's the joke at? Yeah, so that apparently that that lunch scene, uh, a version of that did happen in real life. Uh Dr. Bus was not there though, but in that dinner, that's where they negotiated his salary because Magic did say, like, I want 600 And then they were like, we just gave Kareem 650 We can't do that. We're going to give you four. And Magic said, I'll go back to school. That was real. I'll go back to school for this. What was not real was Magic questioning himself after losing a one-on-one game against Norm. Like, <laughs> Magic was always going to go pro. The only way that Magic was not going to go pro was if Chicago would have won that that coin toss. Because he said, I would have went back to school if Chicago would have won. Was not trying to play in Chicago. Mm-hmm. But everything, like, the gist of that, you know, it was real. But episode starting to wrap up. You see uh, Dr. Buzz trying to go in and close the deal with Mr. Kent Cook. And I love the swan analogy. I was like, I'm gonna have to think about that just in my own life, where you you seem Didn't cool, but under the surface, me either. And under the surface, them little legs was just hard as hell. Hard as hell. <laughs> they were going, but I mean, I'm glad Doctor Bus was able to smooth talk him and be like, "Hey, that divorce you got, you want to pay up like 42 mil? You don't want, you don't. Come on, man. If you do this in cash, you want to pay some taxes on this. Just take these assets and." Give me the team. And he did. And by the way, $42 million in 79 is equivalent to about $164 million now. So mm. it's, a lot, it's a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's also I wonder how many times. People. So it's kind of, you keep making the same mistake. That's on you. I think this was his first marriage divorce. Oh, okay. But anyways, what were you saying? I wonder, oh, yeah. I wonder how many people who watch this show now are going to be calling themselves swans and shit on social media. <laughs> <laughs> but you know it. You know they it's gonna be an Instagram quote. It's gonna be some Snapchat video, some some gonna be yeah, I'm out here looking all graceful like the swan. Like swan. Meanwhile, I'm paddling hard as hell for my life. You don't no, know what's going on. Why like they in grief on a on a boat floating in a yacht and <laughs> hey, bro, what about this? Okay. Okay. That's I'm just curious point. how many swans is gonna show up. The, we got to keep a keep a swan count, keep a swan count going on. But <laughs> the episode comes to a close with Doctor Bus after he purchases the team, 
Lane, he gets a bottle from the liquor store, regular liquor store, grabs a bottle, heads to the forum, gets drunk, hollering, I own this. I own this. That's real. That's apparently he really did that. That's in the book. Like he got drunk in the forum because he owned it. So <laughs> that was what it was. And also that walk that magic does through the stadium where he's just kind of like figures out he wants to play, which again was for TV. He did do that walkthrough where he ended up on the court kind of shooting around, but it was after he was already drafted. It was like after his press conference, mm -hmm. he just kind of mm -hmm. went around and just kind of soaked up that he was about to be a Laker. But I do want to ask y'all this as we close episode one, who was y'all star of episode one? Hmm. Dr. Buss. Yeah, Dr. Buss for sure. Let me see. Hold on. I think I've met. Why are you still thinking, you two, why Dr. Buss? He, he, like, just the hustler in him. Like, this man literally bought a team. Like, how you say, like, yo, I want to buy this team. You don't even got all the money, bro. But he finessed it and got it, and look where he, he owned the team. Just him being a hustler, and then just just watching him maneuver and work. Like, I think, yeah, Dr. Bustle Show. He that Because he's a swan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so the note I got is, I think I like Joanne Bus. <laughs> I think I like her character. Because he has Jamie? all the uh, Joanne. Oh, you talking about his ex-wife? Yeah, his ex-wife. <laughs> what? That's your star of the episode, no, fam? No, I said I have a no. Oh, here. I was about to say. I said I got I like, but I had to think about it. I'm like, okay. Now I liked her little cameo for a second. Like, if she's more involved in the show later on, I'm pretty sure I'm going to love her character. Just That's like, an interesting one. I but, probably would go with Dr. Buss myself. Yeah, Dr. Yeah. Buss, for sure, for sure. Like, he was, he, yeah. I mean, it was the showcase between him and Magic. For sure, for sure. But... All right, that's episode one. We are going to take a quick break. If you're listening on a TGN app, enjoy a nice ad from, from people who love and support what we do. If you are watching on YouTube, we just going to keep this rolling. So stay tuned because we're about to cover episode two in the next half of this episode. And we're back. Myself, Tim, Eric, and Ken, we are talking oh, about winning time. We covered episode one in the first half of this episode of Overtime. And in the second half of Overtime, we are going to be looking at episode two, which, as we mentioned already, digs a little bit deeper into Jerry West's story and really just kind of talks about the Lakers and what they've been going through since Dr. Butts bought the team as they're getting ready for the season. And also a lot of cookie and a lot of magic. <laughs> in this episode so episode two opens up where you kind of get a peek into jerry west's upbringing you see his dad was abusive his brother's dead body was in the casket in their living room and he's going outside and shooting the basketball just to kind of escape all the noise shooting in the snow to his fingers are bloody first of all you have to really want to escape to go outside in the cold and who? We all live in Wisconsin here. The four of us, <laughs> when it's cold. <laughs> have you ever hooped in like with a, a wet ball outside? Like I have, I but have. I wasn't. I was just shooting it around. I didn't stay out there that long. Oh no, yeah, I had a, the the, uh, the cloth joint too. No, I, I had wet ball shooting that motherfucker. Bro. I had to go back to the crib. I was like, "This is not for me. <laughs> Y'all have fun outside. I'm I'm about to go play a video game." But. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, then you see that Jerry West did win a title, just not against the Celtics, but he got himself one. And after he won it, he found himself at a bar. And it's a group of mourners who were there, you know, at a funeral. And they thought he was part of the group because of how depressed he looked. <laughs> he ends up taking down that old girl on a one night stand. Never thought that I'd see the logo's logo um, on TV <laughs> in this way. But hey, here, here we are. Um, logo, and you just logo. you see <laughs> you see just again like how depressed this man has been. Like he just he just won and he wasn't happy, and that's based on facts because you can find an interview of or Jerry West himself where he's just saying like it took a few days after I finally won that title for me to be like, oh that's 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 a good thing. Like I, I actually won. He's I was by myself, no teammates. And I was finally like, okay, that's cool. He's like, but it still didn't feel the same because I didn't beat Boston to get it. And I had already lost six times in a row. <laughs> so, tortured soul. 
like it's not quite to that level with me, but it I, the feeling of like I think Ray Albrecht talks about it later in the episode, but it's like you win it, but then you automatically move on to like okay, we still got next season. It's like you can mm-hmm. like with the Bucks winning last year, it's like I enjoy it, but then like once you're back in the regular season, it's like then you worried about like okay, this person's injured and they just went on a five game losing streak and all this other stuff. It's like you can't even really you really don't get time to enjoy it because it just everything just keeps going. So like I understand a little bit like where that comes from, and especially like if he's already you know he's already so beaten down that like he can't even enjoy when he actually does break through. It's, it's again it, it, it's it's sad, but it, it kind of colors in like who the character is and why he acts the way that he does. Definitely does. You go from there to seeing, you know, Dr. Or some doctor. I keep on calling him Dr. Jerry West. Too many it's because they both Jerry's. It's like Jerry's. Jerry's. Uh, everywhere. All the Jerry's. So mama, what, was, what did she call him? Jerome? Autumn J. You call him Jerome. Jerome. <laughs> what was, no, what was his real name? Gerald? I think she said Gerald. I think I think she Jerry Buss is Gerald. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you said Jerome. <laughs> Jerome. <laughs> <laughs> Jerome, Jerome that West. That would have been wild, though. Yeah, Jerry West is, is Jerome. Oh, it is Jerome. Yeah, no one. Jerry Bus is Gerald. So Jerry West's real name is Jerome. Jerome? Yes, what? Jerome West. How you gonna be that damn racist? Jerome and you West. just to be clear, Jerry, uh, Jerome and Tyrone are actually both two w- white names that black people just kind of took, and white people are like. What? Okay. We'll leave it off. I do want. I don't. We're, I just want to ask this because y'all keep talking about Jerry. What Jerry West being racist? Where was this at? And where? Did I, where? Where are y'all getting this from? Because I didn't see Jerry West being racist in the Me show. Either. I, I heard that he was racist, like through the through the grapevine through like <laughs> this thing. You're talking through the grapevine. I just had to ask the question because I was like, I, 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 I maybe mixing up my. You know, I ain't gonna go there, but I may be mixing them up. Go ahead, keep on rolling. Oh, okay. You ain't gotta tell me twice. So <laughs> you see, you see Jerry West uh talking with like Bill Sherman and other front office folks about what they're gonna do with the team for the next season. Dr. Buzz comes in and he's pretty much like, Hey, what y'all need? I got y'all. And they like, No, you don't, especially Jerry West. I know how this go, angry Jerry. I know how this go. Y'all say y'all want to win, and then you when the time time to win, y'all ain't trying to put the money up to win. And then Dr. Buzz is like, Here go the checkbook. Tell me what you want to give me. You got a week. In a week, you better tell me what you want, and uh, I'll pay for it. You know what's wild about that? They do that shit. Like, that that happens in real life, too, which is hilarious. Like, you get a new boss. You, you had an old boss. Old boss didn't do nothing. You get a new boss, and people complain to the new boss about the way the old boss did things. And so then you got the new boss like, all right, what you need? <laughs> I'm here to help with everything. Don't mean it's going to last forever. But... You can't go to the old, the new boss with the old acting like he's the old boss. I, and that can be hard. Kind of out of that. When you're used to working a certain way mm-hmm. and how business is ran, and then someone new comes in, they're like, "Forget everything you knew," and it's like, "It's all I knew." What are you talking about? Yeah. But yeah, Doctor er, God Jerry West did not look happy when Doctor Buzz kind of came in and was like, "You can have whatever you want, whatever you want." Now you're on the spot. Now what? Ex- Exactly, because later on you see when Bill Sherman comes to visit him and he's in his depressive mode, like Cam was mentioning, in I think like a guest house and his and his drawers just curled up on the flow and shit on the flow. And he's like, I think you're just scared. Like you, you finally won't have any excuse to mm-hmm. say that you couldn't win because now you have all the tools you want to win. So that was interesting. I thought that was uh, that was fun too. Yeah. What I loved was when you see Dr. Buzz go to the owner's meeting and we finally get to meet a young David Stern. <laughs> that was dope. Now, we talked about casting. Like, first of all, the uh, actor playing Dr. Buzz uh, was John Riley. John C. Riley. Yeah, John Riley. First of all, I was like, that's the dude from Step Brothers? Mm-hmm. Yes. Com- over, completely over my head. Um, which also, Adam McKay and Will Ferrell are now not friends anymore because of this show. Because Will Ferrell and him were real cool, and he thought he was going to be Doctor Buzz, mm-hmm. but then Adam McKay hired John C. Riley, and then didn't tell Will Ferrell like, "Yo, I'm going with John." So Will Ferrell found out through the grapevine and was like, "Oh, I thought we were better than this, and now they're not even cool no more." So hopefully, this show's at least a hit. Oh damn! Oh, bro, like that—that was—that was a sad. I was kind of sad when I was reading. Yeah, I was like, "That's 
And they did so much together too. I didn't even realize it. Like Anchorman and Step Brothers and all, like, like twenty plus years of friendship or something like that. Over a role about Dr. Jerry Bus. But young David Stern, I'm a fan. Like he got it. He sounds like David Stern to me. Mm-hmm. Um, that was that was pretty cool to me. But then we meet Red Arbot, <laughs> Jim. GM of the Celtics. Now, Ken, I know you mentioned something about Red a little bit earlier. So what were your first impressions of Red, especially you being a Lakers fan? So I'm not sure how you thought of Red already, but, uh, but I would love to know how you already thought about Red and then like how you seeing him in the show has you reacted. Um, I thought of Red as a redneck piece of shit. Nah. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> What, uh, what they portrayed in the show. Uh, fuck them. Um, yeah, so that's, yeah, they portrayed them perfectly. Racist piece of shit. Um, and he's written it. Yeah. Well, I just thought he was an asshole, but damn. <laughs> just, <laughs> I just thought that, you know, Red is the type portrayed through the show to come in and piss on your carpet and tell you to do something about it. Yeah. Like, he come in your house, put cigars on your floor in your court, Disrespectful. Like, disrespectful as shit. Tell you, laugh to your face. Tell you, go ahead and enjoy your uh your monies and your twenties and fifties on the big ass titties. Just go ahead and enjoy all of that because you ain't gonna get no French. Ain't no winning around here. That's me. To your and face. I'm the only winner. I'm, I'm the, the only, only one that wins. Winner. So go ahead and do like the rest of them. Get your fail. Get your feel and bounce, bro. Because uh, this, this is why I'm at. I, I don't know why, but. Red reminded me of like a cartoon villain, in particular, the villain from the first Space Jam movie that uh Danny De Niro. Oh, you know. He had uh, a cigar. Or not Danny? It's, no, Danny, Danny, Danny DeVito. DeVito. The Danny DeVito played. For some reason, that's who. We were, maybe because when you first see him in Space Jam, he got the, like he's smoking. Yeah, smoking a cigar. Yeah. I'm like, that's just that's just the villain from Space Jam. But <laughs> Red is stogies, man. No, oh, he, he got oh, he pretty. You be talking big shit, and somebody like just walk roll up on me too. <laughs> just all right. This how you get out. I'm hey. I'm just trying to figure out how to just build something so we can make the league look better. What you talking about? Please, you know, it's me. It's me. He says mine. <laughs> Move on. League, come in talking all that nonsense. Like you gonna run something? What league? <laughs> Did you not just see what I? You see how many titles I got? Blowing smoke in his face. Please. <laughs> How many times we beat you? Get out of here. I was like, dang, Red. Red was like, oh my God. Yeah, Red. Chop him in the throat. Yeah. Red and Red and Dr. Buzz had some moments in this episode. We I mean we can keep talking about Red because he comes back, him and Dr. Buzz do dinner and, and Dr. Buzz is trying to like wow him and takes him through the back way to get to the table and it's all the, the women at the table. He's like, oh, we can see them later. That's dessert. You know what I'm talking about, <laughs> Red? And this and this and that. And <laughs> they sit down and Red's like, I'm not impressed. Does this really work for other people? Uh, get them think with the other hand instead of this one? Is that, is that what you do? That's yeah. not going to work on me because it's all I care about is winning championships. And he dressed Dr. Buzz down at that table. I was like, sheesh. Sheesh. But then you see Magic. You know, he had a barbecue. He's he's trying to buy his mama and get his mama a tub. And oh, I'm gone. She, <laughs> mama, oh, my mama was not going. Not I, I do look forward to talking about that, but uh first you kind of just see him walking around in the barbecue or whatever, and everybody's showing him mad love except for his mama. And mm-hmm. then when he showed his mama the tub, her reaction is just kind of like this, I don't want this. I can't believe you did this to me. But then later on you see her talking to her friends, like, boy, guess what she got? Guess what my son got me? A tub. <laughs> like the one you see them white women with on TV. I was like, wow. <laughs> Like, what were y'all reactions to the relationship that Magic has with his mom? Because it's interesting seeing Magic being able to charm everyone except for his mom. And then, you know, his mom and his dad have a conversation later about Magic. But what were y'all initial thoughts with his mom? Um, It's kind of wrapped into that conversation with between uh, Urban Sr. and Mrs. Johnson. I don't remember what her first name was. Um but I do think that it, you know, like as a parent, like you know your kid, <laughs> so like you know, like what 
what they're trying to do and like what you know he's he's using other things to kind of get her on his side because he knows that he's not doing what she wants him to do Going back um, to school. but at the same time i do think that like for him as a son like it feels like damn nothing i do is ever good enough for you um yeah. So like they're not starting from the same place anyway. Mm -hmm. So like it's go it's gonna always lead to kind of confrontation. But like without getting to that conversation, like I do think it is too much similarity between the two, and that's what creates the friction between Magic and his mom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure as a, and it seems like he's more of a well, I don't know. I would say mama's boy, but he's he's always trying to impress her and trying to like you know prove to her or show her like you know I'm doing this and for us I'm doing good you know this and the third. And I'm sure it does probably hurt like crap that, you know, mm -hmm. you know, I love you to death. And it just seemed like you just like the, it's not being reciprocated in maybe it's because I'm trying to give you these things. That, oh, but I'm doing the best I can. And it just seems like you still not you don't really care about it. But I mean, it could be more so that uh, she's a very religious woman. Mm -hmm. so, and she ain't really care for the showboating side. <laughs> she don't really care for the nickname. She don't care about none of that. So it, for her, that ain't she don't care about the money or the fame either. And it's interesting you point that out, too, because, like, the relationship between mothers and sons is so unique. Like, both parents are definitely needed uh, for a child, but I've always found the relationship between a mother and a son is just different. Um, it's like, it's, it's, it's so, it's kind of like with a, with a daughter and a dad, where it's like, it's just a different dynamic. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I've, I've had conversations where, I think even with Tim, where it's like, I think, when you're the parent and your child is of the same sex as you, like if you're a, a dad with a son, a mother with a daughter, you know what it takes to be a grown man, a grown woman. So you're trying to like get your kid to, to understand things because you have the perspective of what they're going to see. But the other parent is the one who's going to kind of come at another way. You're being too hard on them or you, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. you're, you're doing it. Like, can you kind of chill? But with magic's mom, she was the one who was just kind of like, no, you you need to <laughs> you need to get it together and do this and that because even when they were at the uh, the church picnic, it seemed like his parents both knew that Magic had just took a girl down in the car before he walked into the <laughs> into the church picnic. Like, mm. like, mm -hmm. okay. mm. like, don't kiss me with that mouth, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> they're praying. We don't know what they were. They was in there praying. We saw what they was doing, Ken. <laughs> He was laying hands, man. He was laying something. Did they have to wrestle? Was she resisting the hands? Woo hey, boy. Mm -mm. Woo it was boy. in that, truck, that car, bro. Don't give him no excuses. Hey, he, hey, first of all, he too damn tall. He too damn big. Big as hell. Just in the car. In the deuce. Hey, man, she told him, can we go somewhere else? You take up 98% of the car. Yeah, she wants to move around. <laughs> was, like, was it just me or did she not seem shit. like impre Like, she didn't seem like she was enjoying that. No, like, the first sex scene, she like she was sitting there like, Are, "Is this really happening?" And then when he like, finished, oh, oh, we got to get back in there before church. And I'm like, like I'm, it was just like he got his got nut, it. and it was like, okay, let's go. Like, not at all like concerned about whether she oh. enjoyed the experience as well. I definitely <laughs> peeped that too. But then, like going back, going to that next scene, like when she's talking about, oh, you know, I'll be in LA. Like my daddy got a Benz dealership. I was like, oh, I see what this is. So mm -hmm. she don't care I'm about enjoying that. LA, and you know, I have a, we'll be friends out there. And he's like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll see if my schedule uh, <laughs> allows me to. <laughs> oh, you think you're gonna come to LA with me? Mm. It's what's so funny to getting older is like I can see and I'm like, oh, well, we know what this is, but like. Being younger, I think of myself like 17, 18, I would have been like, oh, well, he said that, you know, when he helped he'll find time. And like, I used to believe that stuff. And I just be like, oh, Jesus, thank you for, <laughs> for, for, for growing. <laughs> but um, yeah, speaking, we stay on, we can stay on magic. So magic, one of my favorite scenes in this episode was his cousins pitching him on Tasty Ice. I don't know why that made me laugh so much. Tasty Ice. <laughs> but they would, that crap, you want some ice, it's hot. But you don't want no regular ice, you want some with some flavor. Tasty Ice. <laughs> I was what? like, what? Blue Berry. Ain't nobody doing that. <laughs> I was like, bro, if y'all don't. That was their business plan, blueberries. <laughs> like, bro, y'all, do y'all hear how y'all sound? No. How long y'all do? How long did y'all take to do this? 
Like we just told you our business plan. We selling ice, baby. <laughs> Flavored ice, tasty ice. Hop on, hop on. Nobody what? else doing this. <laughs> <laughs> and then with that scene, you see Cookie come in with her new boyfriend, Vern. She was wild. And with that. that was his Vern, name? That's what I I thought it was Brian, but then I kept <laughs> seeing Vern. And I was like, I, is it Vern or is it Brian? Yeah, I thought I heard Brian. But I did too. But then I was kept seeing Maybe it was okay, Brian well, Burning. <laughs> something. But we're gonna call him B V. No, that sounds like something different. <laughs> but, yeah. So uh Cookie Boo <laughs> came in. And clearly he loves Magic's mom because they be at church together. He's a church brother. And Cookie says she just came to let Magic know that if he needs a friend, needs anything, that she's there for him. And he tried to, you know, take her down. And she said, No, I'm trying to tell you <laughs> if you need a friend here. I'm I'm here for you, but as you mentioned, she's been a little petty too because she, you know why? Why? Yeah, no, she why definitely brought him phone around phone? to on you know his face. I just came to say bye with my new guy. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, you ain't do better gone, bro. Don't call oh, me like you're not being a friend. You know why you here? Walking from my mama house with this nigga. <laughs> My mama, oh, look, baby, he, he he going over there. He the first one. Give hugs. Talk about, I love your mama. She in there she calling him to come in here. And then she eyeballing you from the side, too. That's the crazy part where it's like, he just got, <laughs> we just see him get tore down. And then she it's see him and she's like, oh, baby, come on in here. And this and this and that. Then, then gave him the look like, yeah, you see it. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, an standing thing. gentleman here. Mm -hmm. Church you can club. learn. He tried to take both learn. his girls. Right, Man. right, right. So we'll, we'll keep talking about Magic and Cookie because they were a big part of this episode. Magic goes visit Cookie at work on Brian, a.k.a. Vern's day off <laughs> to talk about to his mom again. and his relationship, which, again, I'll say it, young, naive Camille would have failed for that. That's You opened me up to talk about your mom first, so I'm, we, we, we hear on this deep conversation, and then you bring yeah, up the yeah. fact you still want to be with me. I probably you know wouldn't. Girl, you know I want you. Right, girl. he hit her with that too. You know I love you. <laughs> Bringing this square bear around. He the hit that. Yeah. Turkey, man. Get, get rid of this ball. This job. Let <laughs> <laughs> me over here with uh, Pastor So and So. Go on ahead. Right. Man. Ditch that. Right. <laughs> and then we talked about the chick in the car because it was two different car scenes in this episode. But like the, the second car scene, she's like, "I think you think about Cookie," and he's like, "I ain't think about no Cookie." She need to be thinking about me. Then the very next scene, he pulled up to a, a basketball game where Brian, a.k.a. Vern, hooping. Minding his business. Minding his business. Just <laughs> hooping in front of his girl. And then here come the NBA star, Magic Johnson. The oh, he's he's nine himself. <laughs> Taller than the whole he, park. He came out of bell bottoms, bro. <laughs> Busted his ass. In bell bottoms. He had a... <laughs> I know you can dunk on me. You six nine. <laughs> so not only did he beat him in bell bottoms with the basketball, he was talking the entire time. Yes, just in I his head talking you. about some. Now you know what you're gonna do when that Christmas come and cookie. You you can't get our girl to give she really want. Oh, you that's our girl. She started wilding. Look at you, you on the ground looking like our girl. You even make the same face. I was like, nigga. <laughs> Sure. Okay. Oh, he gotta die. He gotta <laughs> die. Take him in the Come knees on. or something. Like shit. Don't take that pastor. Hit him with the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga disrespectful. Good lord. What well, did he really say? That? I'm like, okay. Nah. I'm like, nah. Oh, he a dick too. <laughs> okay, oh. the beast, bro. He said, laying on the ground, looking like our girl. You even made the same face. The fact that the first episode you see Magic disrespected in a basketball game mm -hmm. to seeing the second one, him doing the same thing to someone else, I was like, sheesh. <laughs> You're on a whole different side this time. Like, All I can say is he was disrespectful. Mm -hmm. And when, <laughs> by the time he ended that game, Brian, a.k.a. Vern, wanted nothing to do with nobody else at that part. <laughs> That man got cooked, bro. He got embarrassed, bro. Like for him, our girl half the game, bro. Our girl, and she's standing there. But the thing is, like, that's the number one pick in the draft that just came for a pick. Like, you can't win that. Like, there's no, no. like, 
meet me, me on a, a even playing field. Like basketball is not. <laughs> that's not where we finna wage this war. Study, <laughs> <laughs> you finna get this word across. The <laughs> Could beat me in chess though. Like oh, you going song for song, verse for verse. Yeah. Can you all send me? Him, man. I, I hope you prayed for him. I know he did. Who prayed for who? Brian, aka Vern. He probably. I'm Bra- sure he prayed for Magic. <laughs> that man went eternal damnation. Right. <laughs> Pray for him to be a flop. Please, Lord, let him get in my bus. Blow out his knee, Lord. Please. <laughs> Just do something to him. Get him away. Get him away. But then told her to turn around, get rid of him, so she can watch him on TV too. I said, nigga, you said on TV. Side. Want you by my side, but until then, you can watch me on TV like everybody else. And peeped off on her. I was like, oh, oh, yo. Oh, this- is that good, boy? Uh, man, I, bro, I hate this nigga, dog. <laughs> I was just gonna say, like, does this make y'all feel any different about magic? Like from hey, the happy smiling, that's real magic. He can't stop smiling. Well, this, no, magic, so- this magic don't stop smiling. He's still smiling. He's just being a dick while he's smiling. <laughs> He was smiling during that basketball game. Yeah, he was the whole time. Breaking the fourth wall. Really? <laughs> he was talking to him when, when Brian, a.k.a. Vern, was talking like, what's the difference between me and you? You only care about her body. You a dog. I care about her soul. And like, Magic's like, well, I, I, I f that too. And I was like, <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> oh my. <I'm> <laughs> and she's just standing there. He's like, you ain't saying shit. You ain't saying holding his, cha- holding his chain because he gave her <laughs> <laughs> hey, we already this, lost. I'm definitely seeing Young Magic was the dude next which to I her. Figured, I figured just, he had to be, but did you see old boy next to her when he gave him the chain? He was like, "Oh my god!" Like he even jumped back, like, "What is you doing?" <laughs> Trying to kiss oh, her too. Hold that and hold oh. this one too. Like, dude was like, "Boy, what?" <laughs> no, he was wilding at the park. <laughs> one <laughs> wilding at the park. <laughs> Since we getting close to the end, I do want to just point out too. We haven't mentioned Genie Bus that much. Yeah, through the first episodes, but this episode you see her really trying to get her ideas off to uh Claire Rothman. And I actually Google Claire because she was actually a super big deal. Like she's one of the top entertainment like bookers ever. Like she's in her 90s now, retired and doing her own thing. But she became like she was somebody. What were you gonna say, Eric? I was just gonna say that was another liberty that the show took because Jeannie didn't work for the Lakers until like the mid eighties. Right. So she's she was only seventeen. Like, yeah. When he bought the team, so you know, but so none of this she, happened. This was that way, right? But <laughs> right, but in the show, she eventually gets her ideas, her which sets the scene for her becoming what we know she can be. And we already talked about red and all that, but I do want to just say the balloons and the rafters that red mentioned at the end that was real, mm-hmm. and that was also part of why they uh wanted to, you know, wanted to win, and they did win the sixty nine finals. So that was all real, but. Real quick, we got like a minute before we got to hit our intro. So, who was y'all star of this episode? Magic. Magic. <laughs> I didn't like Magic in this episode. I ain't, you ain't gotta like him; he's still a star. Yeah, he definitely was showing his ass. This whole episode, he—I mean, he—he he put his foot on the gas and then put a brick around that mug <laughs> and tied that bit to the pedal. <laughs> no brakes. I love. Hey, like, she definitely. Yeah, he pushed it. Uh, I'm ready for more uh, Kareem, though. Like, I feel like I his introduction yes. in episode one, which we didn't mention, but when he's like, fuck off to that kid. Like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, I want more. I want more of this. Yeah. It did I'm ready for that. Jerry West came to his house. Only reason why I feel oh, like we ain't yeah. seen more Kareem because he ain't been around these cats. But once he walk into the room with, oh, my God, it's going to be fireworks. Because Kareem ain't going to be going with all that smiling. Kareem wasn't playing with these people. He wasn't about the games, but... That's the first two episodes of Winning Time. We hope y'all enjoyed our our uh, conversation about the show. If you haven't seen it yet, we definitely encourage you to go and do so. So check out Winning Time. It comes on HBO every Sunday night. So make sure that y'all check that out. If you want to follow me on social media, you can catch me. Wait a minute. On Twitter, Instagram, and these PSN 2K streets at Camille Monet, C-A-M-I-L-L-E. M O N A E because your mom is fancy. Thank you, sir. At Bucks on Twitter. That's all you get. Yep. Everyday underscore gentleman on Instagram. K Harris 216 on Twitter and Snapchat. And it's your boy T I M K I N Z V number three. AKA as catch me. K A Mr. Give it to me. Y'all did bit. 
Hey y'all, don't 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 y'all be like magic out there with Vern, y'all. Y'all be outstanding well. people out here in these streets. <laughs> Shot his big ass. <laughs> Peace out, y'all. We hope y'all enjoyed.